OBE log, my first out-of-body experience, which happened about the last quarter of the year 2012. So I'll start off by retelling the actual event that ultimately served as the impetus for my desire to explore the phenomenon known as the out-of-body experience. Then I will tell you about my actual first body experience. And finally, I'll read you a passage taken directly from the book Journeys Out of the Body, which explains the actual technique Robert Monroe used to induce his OBEs. Okay, so it all started one very early morning. It was about 4 a.m. when I awakened. Because at that time I was uh, staying at my ex-girlfriend's place and she had to work these very early shifts. So naturally, when she would wake up, so would I. So anyways, this one morning she gets up and when she leaves, she forgets to turn off the lamp next to the bed. I was too tired to turn off the lamp, so I just decided to doze off and fall back to sleep. But instead of falling asleep, what ended up happening was I entered a state of sleep paralysis. Now, at that time, I didn't never heard of the term sleep paralysis, but I knew what it was because I had experienced that all throughout my childhood and into adulthood as well. And I was always freaked out by it, but I always wondered in the back of my mind, what would happen if you were just to let it happen, just let go? Because all the times it happened to me, I resisted it. I just wanted to wake up just because it was a terrifying experience. So this time I decided to just kind of let go and see what happens. This time was different though, because um, all the sleep paralysis states I had before, I always felt this presence of evil around me. And this, this is a common theme when I was in a sleep paralysis state. And it's even till now, sometimes I have this experience. And you know, later on, I find out those are some dark entities, black goo or what have you. But this one time, I didn't really feel a negative presence or evil presence. So I'm lying down and I'm on my back and I can see the foot of my bed and I can see my, my feet. Next thing you know, I feel what appears to, fe to seem like, it seems like, like human hands, like actual human hands start to grab my feet and they start to work their way up and up my legs. And I'm freaked out by this because I don't see anything. I can feel it, I can, I can feel a presence in the room with me at the foot of my bed, but I actually can't see anything. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And it starts to go up and up and up and up my legs, both legs, mind you. And it seems like it's going towards my junk, my dingling. So, so I suddenly just wake up. I'm just freaked out. And at that time I had a, a tablet. So I, I grab the tablet and I start to type in keywords like half awake, half asleep, because that's how I would refer to sleep paralysis back then. I mean, before I knew the actual term. So I, I keyed that in and the term sleep paralysis comes up. I'm like, oh, so it has a name. It's actually a phenomenon that happens to a lot of people. And I remember reading somewhere online that the sleep paralysis state is the primary state you want to get into to have an actual out-of-body experience. And so that really piqued my interest. And I said, wow, like maybe this was all happening to me for a reason. Maybe I can find a way to come out of my body. So a long story short, I do some searching online and I find this guy named Robert Monroe, 
who had many out-of-body experiences and he had this book called Journeys Out of the Body, which is, I would, I would surmise that's probably one of his best sellers. So I bought the book, read it, made sense, and applied it. Going back to the entity that was grabbing my legs, I just want to say that now I have a better understanding as to why it was doing so. But I won't get into that now because I will make a future video about it and enter it in the entity classification log playlist and under the name of the helpers. Yeah, I was thinking what I should call this entity. Should I call it, I don't know, astral groping perverts? No, I'm joking. On the night of my first out-of-body experience, I had decided to spend the night at my ex-girlfriend's place again, as it seemed to be a logical place to do it because that's where I experienced the unseen entity during my prior sleep paralysis event. So that night I finished reading up Journeys Out of the Body, familiarized myself with Robert Monroe's technique. Now I, I just want to say that if you decide to do this technique or any form of out-of-body technique, I highly suggest that you sleep alone and not with someone because any slight movement from them can really get you out of the zone. Fortunately for me that night, uh, there wasn't much movement from my lady, so it seemed to pan out pretty well for me. Now, as I lied on my back, I started to relax my body practice a very rhythmic shallow breathing and I focused on the technique which is creating two energetic beams um, each extending from the outside corner of each eye and converging at a point ahead of you like a focal point. So if you were to visualize it or trace it out energetically, it would look like a triangle pretty much. And so once you you hold that that energetic form or that framework, I you would just extend it out. So I extended it out even farther, held it, and then extended it out even farther out. And at this point, at the apex of the triangle, I visualized and felt a, or tried to feel, uh, an energetic ball. And once I felt comfortable or confident enough that I can feel and visualize the, the triangle form, energetic form with the energy ball at the apex, I pull it back so that the apex of the triangle or the ball is in line with my spine or the top of my head. I then focused on the energetic ball and expanded it to be much bigger and then pulled it down to, towards the top of my head. Now this is where it gets interesting because I really wasn't expecting anything miraculous to happen. but Boy, oh boy, oh boy, was I about to get my mind blown. So what happened was the energetic ball, when it reached the uh, my skull, especially when it reached my, my forehead area, it like moved itself <laughs> into my entire head and started to spin and vibrate or pulsate and make this very intense sound I could actually hear. It it was similar to those um, fireworks, what are they called? Oh, 
jumping jack fireworks, I believe. They make that zzz, that kind of spinning sound. It sounded very similar to that. And I was I was pretty much just freaking out. Um, I mean, I was just full of fear and joy at the same time. Because I never experienced anything like this before. But I remember to just kind of go with the flow, not give in to amazement because it's very easy to wake up from these states and then you put in all that work for nothing. So I kind of just rolled with it, go with the flow. I went with the flow. And I remember to pull this energy ball towards my heart space. And when it reached there, it stayed there longer. And the vibrations and sound became amplified threefold. It was very intense. It wasn't painful though. It just felt very strange. And then it kind of like slowed down and I remember to continue the ball, moving the energy ball it is, uh, towards my feet. And the energy ball felt like it got a little bit weaker, even smaller. And once it reached my feet, I pulled it back up towards my head, but I actually believe it stopped towards my heart space. And at that point I felt that I was lifted in the air. And keep in mind, my eyes were closed the whole time, so I could only see darkness. I opened my eyes next, and I am suddenly facing the ceiling. I am directly above an armoire that was in the room. I look down, and I see the entire room. And the first thing I want to do is look at our bodies, and that's what I see. I see both of our bodies... <laughs> And I say, let's do this. I want to hover over them. But unfortunately, I couldn't move because I wasn't in a physical body. I was in an energy body. There was no musculoskeletal system. But I remembered in the book, Robert mentions that you have to use your thought to move. So I just focused and thought of the bed and my body naturally gravitated towards the bed. And I was, next thing you know, I was hovering over my body and my ex's body. And I was just looking at it as it was just, it was very amusing seeing myself. <laughs> and, um, but again, I know I realized I didn't have much time because people who have their first out-of-body experiences or even thereafter, they're usually quite short-lived. So I didn't want to waste any time. I wanted to familiarize myself with how to move in this new astral or energy body. So I moved towards the, um, the wall. So it was pretty easy. I was, you know, moving a short distance. And the next thing I wanted to try was I wanted to try passing through a wall. But I was in front of a window. I thought that would be too easy because it's transparent. And for some reason, I kept thinking maybe the window, there was no window there. So I decided, no, 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 I want to touch, I want to go through the wall. And the wall was concrete. I want to see if this is real. This is legit. So I put my left hand on the concrete wall. I can feel its check texture. It felt so real. I knew this was not a dream. And I pushed. Nothing. Couldn't go through it. So I remembered, remember, don't give up. Apply all you've got. All the pressure. Apply a lot of pressure. So I applied the most pressure I could. And my bot, my hand went through the wall. I can actually feel the concrete. I was in my hand was inside the concrete, and eventually it came out the other side. And then my, I pushed my head through, and the rest of my body followed. Well, the half of my body was outside the wall, and I can see outside. I can see the night sky, and uh, then I just pushed my whole body through, and I slowly floated down to the ground. And that's pretty much where the experience ended. Journeys out of the body, OBE technique, pages 211 to 213. Lie down in whatever position is most conducive to your state of relaxation, but with your body along a north-south axis, with your head to magnetic north, Achieve the state of relaxation. When you have taken as much time as you need to be sure you have obtained this, mentally repeat, 
I will consciously perceive and remember all that I encounter during this relaxation period. I will recall in detail when I am completely awake only those matters that will be beneficial to my physical and mental being. Say this mentally five times. Then begin breathing through your half-opened mouth. Establish the vibration waves. As you continue breathing through your half-opened mouth, concentrate on the blackness in front of your closed eyes. Look first into the blackness at a spot a foot away from your forehead. Now, move your point of concentration to three feet away, and then six feet. Hold for a while until the point is firmly established. From there, turn the point 90 degrees upward on a line parallel to the body axis and reaching out above the head, reaching for the vibrations at that spot. When you find them, mentally pull them back into your head. This simple description must pose many questions. Reach out with what? Pull what back into your head? Let us try another method of explanation. Begin a mental concentration as if two lines were extending from the outer sides of your closed eyes. Think of them as converging at a point a foot away from your forehead. Visualize a resistance or pressure when these two lines meet, as if two charged electric wires were joined or poles of a magnet forced together. Now, extend this juncture outward to about three feet or the length of your outstretched arm. After the three foot length has been established and held, extend the intersection point out to six feet away from your head, or 30 degrees. Once you have learned to establish and maintain the 30 degree angle outward, or roughly six feet away, bend the point of intersection 90 degrees or in a capital L, upward in the direction of your head, but parallel to the axis of your body. You reach with this point of intersection. Stretch or reach with this point more and more until you obtain a reaction. Again, you will know when you obtain it. It is as if a surging, hissing, rhythmically pulsating wave of fiery sparks comes roaring into your head. From there, it seems to sweep throughout your body, making it rigid and immobile. Once you have eliminated the fear reactions, you are ready for control steps. First, mentally direct the vibrations into a ring or force them all into your head. Then mentally push them down along your body to your toes, then back up to your head. Start them sweeping in a wave over your body rhythmically from head to toes and then back again. After you have given the wave momentum, let it proceed of its own accord until it fades away. 